Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. Also very tired, because I just finished recording like uh, an hour and 48 minutes of Shonen Archive with Zen. <laughs> what are we going to be doing today? I'm going to be talking about the White Day pre-release campaign, which should be showing up on the NA side pretty soon. It should be whenever the Valentine's Day event ends, but I'm not 100% sure. I wanted to wait for it. But my work is about to be extremely busy on Tuesday, so it's better that I record this now while I have some time and it's not too much of an issue. And that way everything can go smoothly, in case. It's better to be slightly early than too late, <laughs> like I was with Karen, where I was too late and just could not talk about Karen. So that's going to be today's video. I hope you like it. If you do, you can always leave a like, comment, and subscribe. That helps out the channel a whole bunch. So let's go right into it. What's the White Day pre-release? It is a White Day pre-release, and White Day, um... It's like, uh, in Japan, Valentine's Day is like a two-day affair. For women, it's Valentine's Day, and then for men, it's when they give the returnal gifts, and that's on White Day. So it's basically related to the dudes. Um, during this time, there will be a login bonus. Hopefully it will be the same. And just to say what I said, this started on February 23rd, uh, which is right when Valentine's Day ended on Japan. So that's when I expect it to be for NA. If there's a chance for it to be slightly delayed, they could delay it maybe like a day or two, maybe, probably, possibly. Mm, the reason being, I don't know. Maybe they just want to delay it for a little bit. They could do that. <laughs> it's very hard to tell sometimes with NA. I didn't think that they would ever, they would bring back um, Oberon so as quickly as they did, and they totally did. So there we go. So login bonus during this time. Uh, it'll be a bronze apple, a silver apple, a sink quartz, another bronze apple, another silver apple, a golden apple, and then finally two sink quartz at the end. Over seven days. Ember gathering will be half AP cost. Two times chance of great and super suck will also be here for, I believe, all units. Or it should be during the campaign, the following servants will have two. Okay, so any of these following servants then. Um, it's a lot of servants. Why is C gone here twice? It just, I guess if you have two of them. Anyone from the Bespickled Intellectuals event bonus. Okay, there you go. Anyone that is there um, will have a chance of two times great and super suck. In the workshop, we'll get an elegant classic Phantom Thief hat. If you didn't weren't able to get it the first time it was around, uh, I believe it was from last year. And then there'll be a new item, which will be the Caldea Boys Collection, which for us would be 2023. You'll get the chance to get one of these. If you already got one of these from last year, you won't be able to double up again. So this is only for people who missed out on the previous boy collection. So it's up to you whether or not you missed these boy collections. And what are these CEs? It is... Here they are. It's Flower and Cafe, Club Argonauts, Detective Edmund Resurrected Nightmare Arc, Round 1 on Ice, Night Parade of the 100 Demons, Caldea 11, Supreme Academy, Splat Gun, and Infinity Dream. You can use it on any one of them that you want. I would suggest either choosing the one that is not a 3-star that has art that you really like on it. Because... Uh, I don't think many of them have, like, it's such an amazing effect that you just don't need to get it. Like, would it be nice to have Pierce Im Invincibility? Yeah, I guess. But there are better CEs with it on it that just give more than just crit damage up by 25%. It's very weird. So for me, these CEs are typically pick which one you like the best. I don't even care if it's a 5 or not. If you were, were trying if you were trying to be uh, the ultimate form of it, you would always pick a 5 CE, but I really think it's anything between a 5 and a 4 that has a bunch of art on it that you really like. So do you want Club Argonauts? Go for Club Argonauts. I think I got Club Argonauts last time. It was between that one and potentially the Detective uh, Edmund one. I think it's typically between them, mainly because I really like Detective Edmund, so I go with that. Uh, you, I guess you could use it on the three star if you're desperate. If you just that badly want Caldea 11, you're like, I need it that bad. Give it to me now. I don't want to go for the free to play banner and try it that way. More power to you. Uh, and then there will also be these two code casts, which is great, which is Wheat Porridge and the Lost Casket, which you can get if you did not already get. Plus, we're going to have a main interlude for Seraph, which is going to have free access. Um,. It will be for players who have cleared Solomon, so you need to have at least cleared Solomon. If you already bought it, enjoy that 5 mana prison refund, basically. 
And in terms of, that's basically what you can expect in the campaign. I don't know if NA will add anything to it. Same way I don't know if they'll add something to this banner. They could add, I don't know, would they would bring back maybe BB Summer early? It's a little bit funky, but it can literally be anyone from CCC. They could add in Kiara um, and Summer Kiara if they really wanted to go that way. But I really think it will likely just stay the way it is because these already have... Uh, two characters that they really like on it, so it's just it's likely just gonna stay that way. It's gonna have Melt, King Protea, Passion Lip, and Suzuki Gozen. So just to go over them, and along with these CEs, our conquer on conquest of the Ocean of Stars, the Sukahimehara Student Council, and the Cage. If you ever wanted to just get Anderson in the Cage, this is your chance to cage him up. Uh, and the schedule should be, it begins with melts, and then on the 22 days into the melt days, you'll get King Protea, and then melt will end 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I think, yeah, 5, 6, 6, right before, yeah, 6, and then 2 days after King Protea, so that's how it'll go down. Yes, let's talk about the units, huh? Suzuki Gozen. Start with her, Saber. Uh, she's a Saber. She's Suzuki Gozen. She has one quick, two arts, two buster. Her first skill is a Supernatural Power B. Supernatural Power B is an increased own buster performance for one turn, increased own crit star generation rate for one turn, 40% buster, and 50% star rate, with a cooldown of 5. Second skill is the Mystic Eyes B+, chance to charm one male enemy for one turn, reduce the enemy's attack for one turn, 100% at skill level 10, and attack down 20% on a cooldown of 6. Third skill, Blessing of the Wisdom C, charges own MP gauge every turn for 5 turns, ignores evasion for 3 turns, increases own MP damage by 20% for 3 turns, MP regen is 10% at level 10, and the cooldown is 6. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance A, Writing B, and Divinity A. Her third skill is an Anti-Ruler Attack Damage Aptitude, and her Noble Phantasm, which gets a... That's f f weird that they put this one first. Usually it's the other way around. The Rank B++ Noble Phantasm, the Tenkiame, the Demonic Sun Shower. I was about to say Sunflower. Uh, Rank B++, it's Buster, it's Anti-Army, hits 10 times. Deals damage to all enemies, increases own MP generation rate by 20% for 3 turns. Uh, the damage at level 1 is 400%, and then if you get her all the way to MP5, it's 600%, and then she also does an increased own crit damage for 3 turns. 40% crit damage, uh, that's kind of funny. At charge level 1, and if you get her to the final charge level, which is charge level 500%, it is 80% crit damage for 3 turns. And that is Suzuki Gozen. Uh, yes. Suzuki Gozen. I don't have the best idea of how good Suzuki Gozen actually is. Um, that's weird. It gets, it buffs into this. That's weird. Okay, I didn't realize that. Forgive me. Her first skill is actually Supernatural Power JKB+. Typically on this wiki, it goes, the second skill is the one that, but they, they changed it, I guess, at some point? Weird, but okay. In her second interlude, she gets this. Increases on buster performance for three times, three turns. Increases on crit star generation rate for three turns. Increases on crit damage uh, three times, three turns. Buster up is 40%, star rate is 50%, and the crit damage is 50% on a cooldown of five. And that is a definite improvement over here. The only issue I have with it is it's three times over three turns, which means after three times, it's, it's it. It's over, it's done. Not the greatest form of this. It's better if it would just been three turns. Um, but yeah, it seems like if you were able to get a bunch of crits and just non-stop use our Noble Phantasm, you'd be able to do a bunch of crit damage. I just don't know if you can actually do that very well with her. Um, the reason I say that is that typically when it comes to Buster, you use Vich nowadays. And Vich is better when a unit is able to charge up their own MP gauge. I don't think you can use her at all for farming unless you're doing a very specific and funky team. The reason is is that this charges on MP gauge every turn for five turns. Uh, it's on a cooldown of six, which is kind of a bummer. And then it's only 10%, which is not a, not good um, in, in terms of Vich farming goes. So I think she would probably be better in like a challenge quest type of scenario. Which is really weird, because usually when I think of challenge quests, I don't really think of AoE units that much. 
But the fact that she increases her own MP generation rate and then also her crit damage, it seems like that's the way you would want to kind of use her. I don't know. It's a very weird unit. I think I've heard before that some people think that she's really good, but I don't know that much about her just because I don't use her that much. And looking at her, it looks like there is a way to specifically use her, but it's not typically the way I would play. So, she is a 4-star. Feel free to tell me. I'd actually be kind of curious to hear what would be the proper way of using Suzuki Gozen. This is the first time I've ever actually seen her kit in the entire year for it, which you can probably tell I have a slight bias against her. But at the same time, if a unit's good, I want to know how good they are in actuality. And I think I've heard before that they are good, and I kind of want to uh, hear it. And so if you have a specific uh, case for it, feel free to tell me about it. I would gladly love to learn about it. So that's Suzuki Gozen. Next, Passion Lip, who is a limited. Suzuki Gozen is not limited. She's the only one here who is on every banner. But Passion Lip is just straight up limited. She's an alter ego. Quick, one arts, three buster. She's a super buster girl, buster gorilla. They've changed this. The wiki changed it the way from it usually, why it's, it usually is. Okay, good to know. So our first skill is Breast Valley A+, which gets it after strengthening. Breast Valley reduces own damage taken for three attacks, five turns. Grant self the debuff immunity for three times, five turns. Increases his own buster performance for three turns, and then charges on MP gauge by 20%. The damage taken is reduced by 1,000, and the buster increase is 20% on the cooldown of 5. Uh, her second skill is the masochist Masochistic Constitution A+, which you get after upgrading after, after her first interlude. 500% chance to draw, uh, draw attention to all enemies uh, to self by 300% for one turn. Increases his own defense for one turn. Grant self attack up based off remaining HP when activated if of, of own HP is 50% or less for three turns. Um, the defense increase is 30%. The 50% HP um, is 30%. And if you get her to one HP, she gets 50% up attack up on a cooldown of four. Um, yeah, again, remember this only activates if the HP is 50% or less. Um, third skill, Trash and Crash EX. Increases own attack for 3 turns, increases own invincibility for 3 turns. 500% chance to grant self a debuff on attack buff for 1 attack 3 turns. 10% chance to activate instant kill enemies by 100%. Uh, Death chance when normal attacking increases own defense for 1 turn. 500% chance to stun self for 1 turn. Um, the attack up is 30% and the defense up is 30%. Uh, the death rate here for the for the ones in there uh, curious instant kill always succeeds against mob enemies that have 100% death rate basically bronze rarity servants so there you go that's what it's kind of looking like here and if you combine it with the soya high school uniform also it also kind of changes a little bit as well her passive skills which are magic resistance c independent action c presence concealment a plus goddess essence c and a high servant a her third skill is an anti-assassin attack damage aptitude, and her rank C plus noble phantasm is the Brynhildr Romantia, even if death do us apart. It's a 12 hit buster, deals damage to all enemies, 400% uh, damage to level 1, and if you get her all the way to level 5, it's 600%. Recovers party's HP um, is the overcharge effect, and it's 3000 at level 1, and if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it's a 7000 heal, and that is Passion Lip. And similar to kind of Suzuki goes and Passion Lip is a weird unit because typically when you see an AOE unit, you assume that you want to try and loop with them, but it's just not 100% possible with her. The reason is is that it's a charge owned MP gauge by 20%, which is not going to be enough uh, unless you're doing some very weird, I guess, specific build. But even then, I don't think it's an. Hmm. It Chloe method might work, but that's something to talk about later. It's I'm um, trying to keep it specific to NA for now. Um, Chloe might work though. I don't know, something to look at for the future at least. But as far as NA is concerned, where we can't do that, it's not possible to do it at, in our current means, which is a little bit of a bummer. Even though Breast Valley is on a five-turn cooldown. The good thing is that she's not actually supposed to be used that way. She's really more supposed to be used in the defensive kind of capabilities. Um, and then occasionally you're just able to kind of like hit them. Like the thing that's kind of important here is that she's able to reduce her own damage 
She grants herself a debuff immunity. It's kind of similar to what I said with Suzuki Gozen. It is kind of a bummer that it's only three attacks or three times. Uh, but at least it lasts five turns. And for debuff immunities, I'll say that at least... Um, it's a little, it's slightly better than having it. You obviously always want it to have it for the full three turns, but having it three times is sometimes just good enough. Um, but she's definitely supposed to be used as like a draw the attention of the enemies, take as much damage as you can, and just kind of keep going on with that. The thing that kind of sucks though is that she's also alter ego, so she has a little bit of a janky ability to deal damage sometimes like if you ever get into a node that's kind of a mix it's okay if the thing you're fighting she has advantage over all of them but if you're ever in a situation where she doesn't or it's like a weird mix you can't really use her all that well which is kind of a bummer um but yeah she's an interesting unit i've used her over the years occasionally i really do like lip um so i'm happy to have had lip and to go for her um, but it's not really a unit that I can always bust out every single time that I want. It's kind of like whenever I just want a specific taunt unit, and even then, it's not always the specific taunt unit I would typically want to go for. Just because our taunt doesn't actually last the three turns. I think it only lasts a single turn. Uh, yeah, it only lasts a single turn. But at least this is on a cooldown of four, which is pretty nice. So it, it again, I don't get to use her a whole bunch. Um, but when I do, I kind of like it. So there you go, that's Lip. Um, there's other reasons to own Lip than what she actually does. I think she's just a cool unit. Yeah, she's got big meaty claws. Who doesn't love giant meaty claws? And her sprite, gigantic claws. Gigantic, um, yeah, gigantic claws. Next, King Protea. Talk about uh, another limited servant. King Protea. Uh, she is one quick, two arts, two buster. Her first skill is the huge scale, C+, um, which grants self infinity growth, uh, regeneration buffs for 10 turns, unstackable. Infinity growth grants self growth buff and MP damage resistance up, growth buff every turn for 10 turns. Growth increases own HP permanently, max 10 stacks. MP damage resistance up, growth increases own MP damage resistance by 8%, permanently, max 10 stacks. And the uh, HP increases 4,000 for each one of these. And this is on a cooldown of 10. Her second skill is the Infantile Regression C. Reduces his own kill skill cooldowns by 1. Charges his own MP gauge per HP growth buff stack. 500% chance to remove own infinity growth and 8 NP damage resistance up. And this is a 1 stack per NP is 20% on a cooldown of 5. Her third skill is the Giant Monster of the Great River. Which is an upgrade from Monster of Strength. Increases his own attack for 3 turns, increases his own HP NP damage per HP growth buff stack for 3 turns. The attack up is 40% and the MP per damage stack is 10% per damage stack, So, and that's a cooldown of 5. Her passive skills are Madness Enhancement A+, Independent Action B, Territory Creation EX, Goddess Essence A. Her pen skill for the third skill is the Anti-Ruler Attack Damage Aptitude and the rank E Noble Phantasm is an anti-unit if HP growth is present. Uh, her, the name of it is Aradava King Size. The colossal figure emerges from the Sea of Life. Rank E Buster Noble Phantasm Anti Unit hits five times. If HP growth is present, Buster increases uh, increase on Buster performance by twenty percent for one turn. Uh, deals damage to all enemies. The MP damage is three hundred percent at level one, and at level five it is five hundred percent. Increased on Buster performance for a single turn activates first. It's twenty percent Buster at charge level one. And if you get her all the way to the final charge level, it is 60%. And she also has a really cool costume dress, which I will not show for now because it does contain a little bit of story spoilers. But I will say it's a very nice costume and I really like it a whole bunch. And that's King Protea. Um, this is a weird unit just because I really like King Protea. I cannot tell you on your face value if King Protea is actually good. I don't 100% know. Because the, every time I've ever read her kit, it's like, well, that's a very different kind of way to play the game. And it's just not one that I have a whole bunch of experience for. Um, but that being said, every single time kid is, the King Protea has ever shown up, I have tried her in some capacity. <laughs> I really like King Protea, and I would uh, really like to actually have her. So I can actually use her and actually talk about like the negatives and bonuses of it. Um, but that's just never worked out for me. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's a real shame. And I don't think I've ever really heard anyone talk about her other than to say, I really like her and I'm going for her and I like using her. So if you have some more information to give me on this specific unit, feel free to. But my stance is, is that she's a very different kind of unit to use. Um, and if you want to talk about like the basic like swap them in, does she work with Vich and kind of stuff. This ability kind of being on a skill cooldown of 10 kind of sucks, but at the same time, her other skills seem to be perfectly fine. The thing you seem to want to be able to get is to get infinite growth and to get a whole bunch of growth stuff, but I don't know if that works very well with how to, like, balance it and stuff. So, it's a little bit... I would really love to hear other people's, um, kind of experience using it. That's the right word for it. Because the only really way I can learn a lot about some of these specific units is to hear how people actually feel about them from people who actually use them. And regardless of anything, I think she's a cool unit. Look at this giant kaiju daughter. Who would not want that? Sakura, absolutely perfect. I would love her. But unfortunately, she has never ever showed up for me. <laughs> which is a damn shame. Because I would love to use her. Finally, the final unit on here is Melt. And Melt is also an alter ego because it's just non-stop alter ego in, in here. She is a two quick one arts two buster. Her first skill is the Crime Ballet A+. Grant self evasion for two attacks, three turns. Uh, gain crit stars. Charge his own MP gauge. Um, the star up is 15 and on the MP it's 30% and the cooldown is 5. Second skill is a uh, Sadistic Constitution A+. Uh, which upgrades after sh her second strengthening. Uh, increase on attack for three turns. Grants self a buff on attack buff for three turns. Increases on crit damage by 15% for three turns when normal attacking. Activates first. Very important to put that in there. 500% chance to reduce own defense by 10% for three turns. And the attack up is 30%. On the third skill is the Melt Virus EX, which gets strengthened after, <laughs> which gets strengthened after her first strengthening. If you can ever guess that Melt may be released a little bit on the weak side. Reduces all enemies' MP damage for one turn. Reduces the party's MP damage by 50%, except for self, for one turn. Demerit. An increase on MP damage for two turns. The MP damage is obviously 50% at level at skill 10. At level 10. And the MP damage up is 30%. Um, and that lasts for two turns. Her passive skills are magic. If you're curious what this was previously. Reduce all enemies' MP damage for one turn. Reduces party's MP damage by 50%, except for self, for one turn. 500% chance to grant self a delayed buff for one turn, then increase own NP by 20% after that one turn. So you waited an entire turn for 20% NP damage up. <laughs> and now you can just get it at 30%. It was a little bit silly the way that they did that. It never made any sense. Uh, magic resistance B, writing B plus, uh, not writing B plus, writing B, independent action A, goddess essence B, and high servant are her passive skills. Her third skill is an anti-lancer damage uh, attack damage aptitude, and her noble phantasm is a rank EX, the Sarvasti Meltout, the Benzen oh my god, the Benzatans five string Biwa, rank EX anti personal hits eight times. It's quick, so that's a very important thing to keep note of. It deals damage to one enemy, removes their buffs. The damage is one thousand two hundred at level one, and at level five it's two thousand. Increased own quick performance for three turns. Charge level 1, it's 10%, and uh, at the final charge level, it is 3%, and this does not apply first, because that does not say it applies first. And that is Alter Ego Melts. Um, Alter Ego, she's really good. Um, this is another unit that I don't use all that often, just because Alter Egos are a little bit funky to use, but at the same time, she's very effective if you want to use her, uh, if you want to actually use her. It's not like an Alter Ego that I feel like is, is that held back by their class, even though I feel like if she was an Alter Ego, probably a little bit more people would use her, just similar to, like, Lancer Melt is probably used a little bit more just because she focuses down on Lancer type stuff. Funny how that kind of works out sometimes. Sometimes you want a specialist over someone who just is a red mage and can do it all a little bit. But she is really good. She's been buffed a whole bunch over the years just because when she released, she was not that amazing. Like you can see here, uh, a 30% increase to attack and a 500% chance to reduce defense for 10%. Um, to reduce your own defense by 10% is not super good. But then this changes a little bit so that you have a little bit more positives to go if you're negative uh, buff at the end. 
Crime Ballet, I believe, used to not charge the MP gauge, so it was just this and that's it, which is not enough. Um, I will say the Grand Self Evasion for two attacks, three turns. I know I just got finished talking about, like, oh, yeah, it's two attacks for three turns is usually not that good. But this is pretty close to actually the good version of you want. I think the version that you want for evade is one that can <laughs> infinitely stack and is also hit based so you don't lose it all. I don't think anyone has something like that. But a low cooldown uh, version of evade that's like this where sometimes the enemy won't attack you. So you have an ability to not take multiple attacks for multiple turns is pretty good. And yeah, the fact that she's quick... Uh, means she's going to be able to get a lot of quick stars and she's going to be able to quick stars a lot of stars excuse me i'm so tired from all the talking i've done um you're going to be able to take advantage of this increase to own crit damage uh by 15 percent for three turns when normal attacking um so yeah overall a very good unit and at the end of the day that's what matters most it is can you use melt and the answer is yes you can um the reason that matters so much is because regardless of anything People are going to summon for Melt. People love Melt. I like Melt, and I summoned for her. I loved her after the finishing the CCC event. Melt went from a character who was like, ah, oh, whatever, it's that unit that a lot of people talk about, and it has a lot of art, and that's fine, whatever. I care more about Passion Lip, and that's where I'm going to. And then the CCC event happened, and that story, it completely changed my tune about how I feel about Melt. And I was like, no, this is, this is a great character. I love her, absolutely. And so i am always been very happy to have her, um, her unit itself. And if you're a fan of Melt, you'll find ways to use Melt, and she'll be really good, and you'll be like, oh, Melt's one of the best for sure. Um, but if you're someone who's like maybe weirdly just looking for always the best, I always have to bring it up, because there are people who just summon for, they don't give a crap about the characters, and they just care about strength. I think you're probably good off in that end, but for everyone else, Melt is definitely worth having and worth owning and just having in general. Because uh, Melt's a really good character, and also extremely popular. And she's going to be releasing pretty close to Valentine's Day, or on Valentine's Day, actually. When the Valentine's Day event will be ends, it's on the 14th. So this should, for all intents and purposes, be the Valentine's Day uh, banner that's going to be up on Valentine's Day. Um, and... Yeah, the people who are going to be summoning on this are going to summon on it. There's nothing I can say to it. I just wanted to bring it up in case you were someone who's kind of on the edge of stuff and trying to figure out. Obviously, you should probably not summon on this banner if you're just someone who is starting out and is currently waiting for Castoria or someone like that. And if you're going to ask me, like, hey, should I summon on this before I get one of the um, support casters or support units? I would say no. I would say you first secure... Like, there's no... Um, it's a little bit funky because I always say, especially because Melt is quick, and thankfully this summer is going to come up Summer Scotty, so hopefully there will be a little bit more um, Scotty friends out there. But it'll be a little bit rough going if you don't have a Scotty and you're just kind of like going with a Melt in a dream. Not to say that you can't make it work because it's possible to make it work. You don't need the highest tier servants to always win. Uh, bless you. Uh, sometimes it's just having the units that you like is good enough, um, and that's definitely where I feel like is the case here. Um, so yeah, if you're going for them, I wish you the best of luck. Thankfully, I have Melt. The only thing I have to worry about is, pa is King Protea, and I don't know if I want to deviate from the plan. I think I've already said previously, based on my previous videos, I can't deviate from my plan whatsoever. So I, I'm going to have to unfortunately skip King Protea once again, which makes me sad, but it's she doesn't want to show up. What's up, boy? My brother is not. Do you have enough to do a full video? Okay, he doesn't have enough to do a full video. <laughs> so there'll be no video for it. You're going to have to keep waiting for Bunyan. If you want an actual summon video from me. Uh, but yeah, I wish you guys the best of luck. Uh, nothing but the best of luck to you guys for summoning. And hopefully it shows up on the 14th. Um... But who knows? And that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Like I said, sorry if I sound just a little bit too tired and a little bit too out of it. But I have been talking for a very long time. And this is the only time I have available before my work goes into crazy work mode. So I figure I have to record something on this. And this is coming up pretty soon. I would really like to wait a day to see if there's going to be any banner changes. But I really don't think there's going to be any banner changes. I don't think there's going to be any event changes. I think this is the way it's going to be. And that's it, everyone. Once again, say it again. Best of luck to you guys. G good luck to all of you going for Melts, going for Lip, going for Gozen, going for King Protea. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Until next time, have a good day. Peace out. Goodbye.